Welcome back. You're listening to Cindy Laverty Show nationwide on CRN Talk Radio, and I thank you for joining me today. My guest is Zoran Balbas. Am I pronouncing that right? You are. Oh, Balbas. good. Okay. Right. And we're talking about his book, Soul Space, which I'm telling you, if you're anything like I am, it'll really rock your world. All right, Zoran, you talk about the difference between just existing in a home and flourishing in a home. And you were touching on that a little bit before we had to go to break, but I want to go back to that. So, you know, um, you know, most of us have are living in an environment that is a collection of things, furniture, accessories, <laughs> pictures that are from choices that we've made over the years. Yep. And what Soul Space is about is, about, is it, it's about presencing ourselves and our environment in this moment and taking a look at all the choices that we have made and deciding whether would we choose those things again in this moment or not. And if we wouldn't, then it's not really serving us. So Soul Space is about clearing out all the parts and all the stuff of ourselves that no longer truly serve us so that we're surrounded by things that we love and things that inspire us and things that really matter to us. Do you have some kind of a sociology or psychology degree? I mean, how did you come to figure all this out? Well, you know, it really just, you know, it sort of like came through in just working with clients and, you know, doing my own several moves throughout my life. Mm -hmm. And I realized that there was there were steps that I was going through and that I was taking clients through to bring their home into a real expression of themselves and a real expression of myself. Right. And it just sort of came through over the last 10 years. So what you're saying here is that our, the space that we live in, and it doesn't have to be a big, huge house. It can be a tiny apartment. I think you say it's hard to create a a dungeon into a soul space, but (laughs) I'm pretty sure you say that somewhere in the book. But our space holds all of our emotional baggage, right? Yes. I mean, basically what I say is that the interior design of our space is a mirror of the interior design of ourselves. Ooh, that's got to be really scary for some people. <laughs> but you know, it can be scary, and you know that's why with soul space, I always say take soul space at your soul's pace. Uh huh. You know, take it one piece at a time. Take it one emotion at a time. You know, allow yourself the time to process and to go through it, so that you really create the relationship that you want with the environment that you're living in. Consciously. Right. Right. And I love how you say that. Um, Every home tells its own story. And I don't think we always think of our homes like that. So tell us a little bit about how that is, whether you're living in a one-bedroom apartment or you're living in a really beautiful mansion that's been designed, you know, by an interior designer. Yeah, you know, it doesn't really, the size of the space doesn't really matter. You know, what, you know, we've all been in, in people's homes that really look beautiful, mm-hmm. but yet they don't really feel beautiful. Right. You know, sometimes, sometimes people put together, if they have the money, they put together a look and an image that they want to project to the world in their space, but yet there's no soul. There's no feeling of, like, who is this person? Well, I'm always and amazed when someone hires an interior designer and they, li- like, you know, move out for about four or five months, and then they come home and... The designers picked out every single thing down to, you know, a a flower in a vase. And that's usually an expression of the designer's taste and the designer's (laughs) soul as opposed to the person that's living in it. Right, right. Soul space is about creating it for you. Okay. Having it be an expression of you. So there's a whole there's a whole soul space process. I mean, it's it's um, various steps here. But one of the things that you talk about, there's a lot in the book about clearing out the stuff, getting rid of things. So when you're working with someone or when you're talking to people like you are today on the show, how do you decide what to keep and what to get rid of? I mean, you can't do this in a weekend. That's for sure. No, you really need to take the soul space process sort of one room at a time. Yeah. And one of the things you need to ask yourself, there's questions that you can ask yourself that are in the book, but you need to ask yourself, you know, what is, what is this? You know, what is this painting? Where did it come from? And is there a connection emotionally or not emotionally? 
You know, does it really make me happy every time I walk by it? Does it remind me of, like, the most amazing vacation I was on and I brought it back? You know, all things have attachments to emotions. You know, they're inanimate objects, but yet there's, you know, there are emotions that are attached to them. Yeah. And so it's really just taking a look at really what are the emotions that are attached to it. And if it really is something beautiful, then keep it. If right. it really serves you, then keep it. Right. If you if you want it in a divorce and you walk by it and you think, oh, you know, I cannot believe that he cheated on me, get rid of it because <laughs> you're keeping that relationship in your life and you're keeping the you know the the pain of that relationship still active. Well, and you give these stories in your book about, I mean, something almost very similar about this painting that this woman won in her divorce, you know, and she was so proud of winning it, but it kept that whole ugliness of the divorce in her life. It kept the, it kept the pain alive. And when she ends up sending that painting to auction and received a lot of money for the painting and then started buying new things for her home, Mm -hmm. those things were, it was like, you know, the rebirth of the pain. Yeah. So she was living in an environment that she really loved. Right. Well, you know, I have um, on my desk, I have a a pine cone and people come in my room and say, you know, why do you have that pine cone on your desk? Well, I picked it up when I was in Normandy at the... um, at the American Cemetery in Normandy, and I just wanted to keep it as because it was such a powerful, you know, experience for me. I just keep it on my desk. It just makes me remember and connect. And so I would never get rid of my little pine cone. Thankfully, it Absolutely. hasn't rotted or anything. What Absolutely. do we do about clutter? What do we do about clutter? We clear it. <laughs> Because, you know, the, the clutter, you know, the clutter is just, you know, keeping us from really being able to settle and to be able to be at peace and to relax at home. You know, clutter really keeps us from being able to see any, any of the beautiful objects that we have in our space. Right. You know, it's like, do we really want to be living in a storage bin or do we really want to be living in something that's beautiful? <laughs> Do we want to be living in a storage bin? No, I really don't. But I feel like in my office, I kind of have a lot of clutter. And so I guess that's about me taking the time to go to the container store and find beautiful things to store my stuff in, right? Absolutely. There are certain things that you want to see every day, and there are certain things that you don't really need to have access to every day. So put them in something that's beautiful, in a beautiful box that you can always access, But because it's, it's all communicating to us. And it's like the communication just needs to be a little bit calmer. Yeah. When we, when we live in our homes, and I'm thinking about, you know, art that we have in our homes, how many... On, I mean, in your in your estimation, in your experience, how many of us walk through our homes just kind of oblivious to what's really there? Oh, I think that over the years, we've just, um, we all become oblivious to what's there. And I don't think you, you do. No, because, you know, I actually, I go through the soul space process almost quarterly. Oh, do you really? I do, because one of the things that I'm aware of is that as I am shifting and changing and evolving, my space needs to shift and change and evolve with me. Okay, let's take a quick break, and when we come back, I want to talk about that, because I think that's a really important point for people. So stay with us. You're listening to Cindy Laverty's show. I'll be right back. 